Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very exponential equation with complex numbers. We have z to the power i equals 1 plus i and we're going to be solving for z. Now z is such an interesting complex number that when you raise it to the power i you get 1 plus i. So it's equivalent to adding 1 to i. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we can solve this problem. First of all, we're going to be considering the complex exponential. So whenever you have something like z to the power w, where z and w are complex number, numbers, you can write this as e to the power w ln z. All right, great. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem using this complex exponential property. But before we get into the solution, I just wanted to share with you what Wolfram Alpha is supposed to offer for this. And I'm like, come on Wolfram Alpha, you can do better than this, right? Just raise both sides to the power uh, negative and 1 over i and you're going to get z by itself. Great. Okay, so let's see how we can use this information to solve for z. Since we have z to the power i, we can write it as e to the power i ln z. Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and set this equal to 1 plus i. And now this is the equation we're supposed to solve. And to solve this, we're going to use the polar form on the right hand side. 1 plus i can basically be written as 1 comma 1 or like this. Its modulus is going to be square root of 2, the distance from 0. And the angle that it makes this is the real axis, this is the imaginary axis, in other words, this is the argon plane, this would be pi over 4 radians. So you're kind of looking at an isosceles right triangle, so something like this, okay? 1, 1, or I should say 1, i. Okay, this is our number 1 plus i, and this is the polar representation. How do you write this in polar form then? You do need r e to the i theta for the number, and r is 1, well actually that's not 1, r is square root of 2, right, because that's going to be the distance or modulus, and theta would be pi over 4. So let's go ahead and use this information to write 1 plus i, and on the left hand side we have e to the power i ln z, that's equal to 1 plus i, which can be written as square root of 2 times. Now we're supposed to write e to the power something, right, and the angle is supposed to be pi over 4. But pi over 4 is just one of many angles. You can definitely add 2 pi to it, which is going to bring you to the same point. You can add 4 pi to it. You can add multiple. You can even add negative 2 pi. You can subtract 2 pi from it, and it's still going to bring you to the same point. In other words, we can basically add multiples of 2 pi to pi over 4, and that will give you infinitely many possibilities. So far, so good. Great. Now we have this equation, this equals that, and then we're going to go ahead and use the logarithm on both sides, right? So this is going to become i ln z equals, now if you ln the right hand side, this is going to be a real valued ln, which is ln square root of 2, plus, now notice that if you log a product, it turns into the sum of two logs. In other words, ln AB is ln A plus ln B. Obviously, you can also use the following formula or identity if Z is equal to A plus BI, its absolute value is going to be the square root of A squared plus B squared. And if you're trying to find what the ln Z is, you can kind of write, you know, suppose Z can be written as uh, e to the power i theta multiply by r. When you ln both sides, this is just going to be, in other words, ln z can be written as ln absolute value of z plus i times the argument of z. Does that make sense? So it's basically how you can find the log of uh, or the log of a complex number. Okay, I just couldn't say it. When you ln the second part, you're going to get i times pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. 
Awesome. Now, how do we solve for z from here, right? So here's what we need to do. First of all, we do need to divide or multiply both sides by i. A lot of times people are going to divide by i, but I'd rather multiply by negative i, which is the same thing, exact same thing. Multiply both sides by negative i, and that's going to give you the answer because this is 1, right? Negative i squared is 1 because i squared is negative 1. So this gives us ln z equals negative i squared. Again, is going to be 1, so we'll get, we'll get pi over 4 plus 2 pi n minus i times ln square root of 2. Again, you can write square root of 2 as 2 to the power 1 half and bring the 1 half to the front, so on and so forth. Those are minor details. You don't really have to worry about it. But this is L and Z, and we do need to find Z. How do you find Z from here? You can just e to the power of both sides, and that's going to give you the answer. When you do, you're going to get e to the L and Z equals e to the pi over 4 plus 2 pi n minus i times ln square root of 2. Awesome. Now we do have a minus sign here. That means we can kind of divide. So we can kind of write this as z. e to the ln z is z. This will become e to the power pi over 4 plus 2 pi n divided by e to the power i times ln root 2. Obviously, there's another way to approach this, which is probably a little better. We can go ahead and, uh, you know, kind of write this as, oops, I didn't want to, uh, didn't mean to move the e, but anyways, we can go ahead and put this here. Now, we can also write this as e to the power negative i times ln root. This is probably better because we want to multiply it rather than divide it, right? So, here's the thing. This is going to be our modulus. So this is the absolute value of z. Of course, n is an integer, so it can take infinitely many values. If you just think about n equals 1, that's going to be pi over 4 plus 2 pi, or even uh, you can think about n equals 0, which is going to give you e to the power pi over 4. And this is the second part, and we can write this using Euler's formula. So this is going to be e to the power pi over 4 plus 2 pi n multiply by cosine of... Now you've got to be careful here because notice that this is the, going to be the conjugate of e to the i ln root 2 because modulus is 1, obviously. So, but cosine is even, so we can kind of write this as cosine of ln root 2 minus i times sine of ln root 2. So we can kind of write this number in standard form. If you plug in the values, you're going to get the numerical value for z. All right? That's basically going to give you the numerical answer. And this is going to be the answer from Wolfram Alpha again, which is obviously uh, not the best version, right? So we're going to stick to this. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.